and more starts now. Good evening and thanks for staying with us here at 730. There's been some tension running through our city over the last 36 hours or so in the wake of a video that quickly went viral. It showed a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer punching a woman multiple times while she was on the ground. This incident happened Monday afternoon. The video surfaced yesterday. Police said two people resisted arrest in the area of South Tryon Street and Arrowwood Road in Steel Creek. The video was posted to Instagram shortly afterwards. Two officers patrolling the area of South Tryon Street and West Arrowwood Road observed two people identified as Anthony Lee and Christina Pierre smoking marijuana at a city owned bus stop. The officers stopped, engaged the two people and stated that the two people were under arrest. Both individuals resisted arrest and a struggle ensued with the officers. During the struggle, a female off the, the female individual struck an officer multiple times. When the off when the struggle with both subjects started, one of the officers had called for backup. He called for help as the two were resisting arrest. After the officers took Mr. Lee into custody, a loaded nine millimeter handgun was located in a bag that was in his possession. So with that as the backdrop here, officers encounter two people smoking marijuana at a bus stop. The confrontation becomes hostile. An officer says they were hit, backup was called, and a loaded gun was then discovered. Today, CMPD Chief Johnny Jennings decided the time had come for the public to hear from the department directly. We brought you the breaking news live as it happened just before noon today. We know many of you are likely busy at work and away from your televisions when this news broke. So we wanted you to hear more of it tonight. I'll just say to everyone into our community, uh, I get it. I understand the outrage. I understand the uh, emotions that come when you look at a video that involves an officer who is punching a female who were trying to make the arrest and subdue. Uh, I understand that. Uh, to our officers who put on this uniform and do the work every single day to keep our community safe, uh, I'll tell you, I am still and always will be proud to be a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer for the last 32 years. I think we have a lot of great men and women who do great things every single day in our community to keep our community safe. But as we look at this video, we also have to understand what impact this has on the community. Are there things that we can do better? Absolutely. Are there things that I wish would have never happened? Certainly. Are there things that I think we can take from this and become better as an agency? We're committed to that and we're going to do that. We don't want an incident such as this in the public eye to define who we are as an agency. I've been in those exact situations. I've been in struggles with men, women, white, black, all of that in my 32 years of policing. And I can tell you that I've never been involved in using force that has looked pretty and has looked good to the public. Now, one of the big questions Chief Jennings was asked involved those violent blows the CMPD officer delivered to the woman on the ground. Those blows were designed to hit a nerve in the leg in an effort to gain compliance. The chief was asked if officers are trained to hit those sensitive spots, but also the threshold. And at what point is it enough? The uh, peroneal nerve is the nerve that goes down the side of the leg. It's a major nerve. Uh, it is a, a tactic tra uh, trained by the state, uh, and we train it within our police academy as well. It is a compliance blow. A strike to the peroneal nerve is if someone is, has their hands underneath them and we're trying to activate an arrest, uh, that strike to the peroneal nerve, the hope is that it will cause that distraction or pain compliance that will get them to put their hands behind their back. The, the threshold, that's a, that's a difficult point to answer. We are doing 
what is necessary to activate the arrest. Uh, from what I saw, that once he was in custody in handcuffs, there were no more blows delivered. Chief Jennings added it's too early to determine if officers involved will face disciplinary action. The officer captured hitting the woman has been temporarily at least reassigned. Chief Jennings says he filed the petition with the courts for the body camera video to be released, but that's not an overnight process. It could be months before it's made public. Is it frustrating to you that you have video? that was shot on a camera, that was bought with the promise of transparency to the community, but there's a state law passed by lawmakers in Raleigh who are blocking you from using your judgment to release it to the public. Yeah, Nick, it, it is frustrating to me because uh, when, as much as I can tell the public that it's not my decision to release, I can petition for it, but I ultimately don't make that decision. And joining us now here in studio is WBTV Chief Investigative Reporter Nick Oxner to talk more about this. Obviously, you're at that news conference today asking a lot of really important questions about this. But remind people, why is this situation the way it is where we can't get quick access to this video? Well, because by law, police video, all police video in North Carolina is secret. That was a law that was passed by the Republican controlled General Assembly in 2016. Mm -hmm. You may recall it actually went into effect just days after the Keith Lamont Scott incident and there's con confusion around the video in that incident. Um, and it's stayed in place and lawmakers have tweaked it and adjusted a little bit, but generally speaking, they have been recalcitrant. They've refused to change the law in any significant way that would allow the public yeah. to get quicker access to video, even in situations like this. Uh, we keep saying months and months it could be before we actually see this video. Help me with this because if memory serves, we've had cases where this has been expedited a little bit, if not locally, certainly across the country, well, right? Well, and even really across the state. In Wake County, there was a pretty controversial shooting in the last year or so. Uh, they literally overnight, the shooting happened one night, by the next morning, the video was ordered released. They, it, it can be done. So part of it is the law is terrible. The other part is we have a court system in Mecklenburg County, and I go to court to get body camera video released all the time. Right. I got, I argued two hearings for video that you'll see on our air soon last week. Our court system and the process here specifically in Mecklenburg County is among the slowest in the state. I mean, if you recall the Lincoln County uh, deputies where they, they yep. were accused of, of assaulting a man, and they did assault a man uh, on, on tape. Uh, I filed that petition, I think, on a Tuesday, and it was released on Thursday. So it's a local issue you're talking it, it, about. It can be done if you want it to, but it, it, it can't be done in Mecklenburg County for reasons I can't explain to you. Uh, you mentioned the law is problematic. Uh, Curious talking to Chief Jennings, others around the state. Is there an appetite to see it changed finally? Well, uh, every time I talk to Senate Republican leader Phil Berger, the president pro tem, mm -hmm. uh, he certainly doesn't have an appetite. And frankly, until or unless he does, it's not going to really change. Uh, that being said, I asked the chief that question today. And, and he said, I think we need to be able to get to court quickly. Um, but it was interesting. Uh, he still said he didn't want the ability to release the, <laughs> to right. release the video. I do want to ask you about this too, real quick, because we didn't mention here in this setup, right? Because there are some questions still to be answered with this. We have pictures uh, of Miss Pierre with yep. some bruises on yep. her face. That part is really not explained yet, is Correct. it? Correct, and that was actually the first thing I asked Chief Jennings right. at this press conference today was, um, you've talked about the, the knee strikes and that's to gain compliance. No one's explained how her face is bruised and swollen. And he didn't dispute that her face is bruised and swollen. And quite frankly, he said, I don't know. It may have been when she was on the ground. Yeah. She may have been punched. He said that. No one really knows. Of course, uh, earlier tonight at five and six, we heard from the lawyer for Miss Pierre uh, who, who said that they have an eyewitness who claims to have seen that first officer who arrived on scene punching Miss mm -hmm. Pierre. Uh, of course, the chief and CMPD says that Pierre punched the officer first. But the video could help us you know, decipher Maybe. some of this, Maybe. right? Well, because the chief also said the video, the, the body camera is, uh, fell off the yeah. officers. And so it's not clear that it captures clearly everything. So best guess, it is going to be weeks, months before we see this? Unless someone at the Mecklenburg County Courthouse decides that the public should see this mm. as soon as possible and decides to do something about it, which anyone wearing a black robe in no <laughs> Superior right. Court could do. And it's careful to take on judges, but that's right. what I'm going to do. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah, and I think there's so much community interest yes. in it, right? I think yes. there, there's that argument to be Absolutely. made uh, for all of this. Nick, thanks for stopping by and sorting it all out for our viewers here at home. Always appreciate you. Thank you.